Uh, we're wrapping up yet another week of the legislative session, so we're here to tell you what went down and what's coming up. He's Andrew, and I'm Nate, and this is the DLC's Policy Corner. We're coming up on the midway point of the session, which means social services appropriations is going to rank their funding priorities for executive appropriations. We've sent our list of priorities to the committee, and those recommendations will be available on our website. Stay tuned for the website later. We'll give you a few highlights from those recommendations too. First up, we recommend funding for the DSPD waiting list. While we prefer the $400 million from Representative Daily Provo's bill, we mentioned last week, we also support the governor's request for moving 272 folks off the list. Uh, next, we supported a couple of Representative Ellison's requests for mental health funding. One is his request for $8 million to cover the gap, the gap in funding to uh, local mental health authorities. If the gap isn't filled, an already underfunded mental health system that can't meet the needs of the community may see a reduction in services. Uh, the second thing is a request to ensure, ensure parity in Medicaid rates for youth in foster care and JJYS. Uh, the lack of parity is leading to youth not getting access to mental health treatment and actually may violate federal Medicaid regulations. We are also recommending they prioritize funding for the home and community-based service recipients, which will help folks living in the community. For example, one individual we know had agency attendant coverage and only in the morning for and only in the morning for just six weeks in the last year and a half. They could hire their own staff but would have to subsidize at least $7 an hour out of pocket to attract and retain someone in today's market. And we're encouraging more funding for increased staffing for facility licensing, adult protective services, and the Office of Public Guardians so that the state can provide appropriate oversight and ensure folks in facilities remain safe. We also let the committee know uh, we oppose the governor's request for $10 million for a five-year pilot of a home court uh, because neither the parameters of the proposal nor the target population were defined. Uh, we would rather the money is used to, to strengthen systems we already have. Um, again, as we said earlier, these are just a few of those highlights. So check out the full list of recommendations on our website, which I promise you is coming later. We don't have a lot of updates on bills, as there haven't been a great deal of new ones to focus on this week. However, we did speak to Representative Wilcox HB 84 on school safety, which, requi which requires schools to either have an SRO, or an SRO or a staff member with a gun. The substitute did, uh, did add more training and awareness of disabilities, so we're happy that Representative Wilcox added those pieces. However, we remain concerned more guns in schools will lead to more predictably harmful outcomes for students with disabilities. So yeah, as uh, Andrew noted, we don't have a ton of new bills and uh, we also didn't have a ton of bills in committee this week. However, we do have a number coming up next week, including HB 197 on supported decision-making agreements that'll be up in committee soon. So come back next week for some hopefully exciting updates. But as always, you can follow any updates on our bill tracker on our website, disabilitylawcenter.org slash issues slash public dash policy, where you can also find our budget tracker and calendar. As always, thanks for watching the DLC's Policy Corner. Mm -hmm.